Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. I am back once again to do a Castle Rock episode review. A new episode came out today, so finally I am doing a review on the day that the episode actually came out. I think that's the first time it's happened, maybe since like the first two episodes or whatever, but um, this episode is episode nine. We got one episode left, so this episode I expected it to be really crazy. I expected it to really lead into things, give us a direction, the final stretch, a direction on where we're going with the the season finale. Um, and this episode decided that if you, if you thought you had just a little bit of sense of what is going on, this episode was basically saying, we're going to make everything make total nonsense. Nothing's going to make sense. There's going to be different universes. There's going to be different realities. There's going to be different characters that are actually the same characters. You're going to have no idea what's going on. I felt like this episode was the writers being like, I'm sick of everyone figuring out what's going on. I'm sick of people guessing all these theories, right? Well, screw you. We're just going to make you freaking lose your mind over what is going on in these episodes. You're not going to have any understanding of it. And that's what it was. And I'm very, very shocked that this episode, its placement in this season. Episode 9, we kind of figure out what the kid has been doing, what led him up to the up until the point to being locked up in that cage in the warden's uh, bunker. Um, so we got, it was like a whole episode telling that story. So he left off with him revealing in the last episode that uh, Molly was going to end up dying. He pointed to the forest, told her this is where you end up, this is where you die. Um, and we were like, whoa, what's going on? So we do a whole recap of how they got to that moment. And uh, I just think episode 9... I, I've never, I, maybe there have been, I'm just forgetting them, but I've never seen a second to last episode of a season and then do like a whole recap of what's happened and such. Uh, I know we haven't seen this, so it's not really a recap, but I just feel like they, they took a big step back where this episode should have been like five, six, seven, I would say. Um, I think it came way too late. I didn't like this episode because it... Um, it just wasn't for me. This this it, this episode made it feel like this is much more a sci-fi show. Um, it's I, what I, what I've been very bummed about and disappointed is the this show is not scary at all. Um, it has suspense parts, but it's always like the second half of the episodes. Um, I wish there was a lot more suspense, a lot more like thrilling, you know, intense scenes. Um, it jumps around way too much. That was something I thought was going to be a good thing at the beginning of the season. But they just jump around so much that I feel like there's no really long scenes, honestly. Um, and the acting is is fine. I'm, I'm perfectly okay with it. Nobody does bad on it by any means. Uh, but I'm just shocked when I look on Twitter or see comments on videos or reviews where people are like, these actors are brilliant. They need Oscar. They need Emmy nominations. And I'm just like, they're just kind of there. I mean, it, none of them are like breakout, like, like intense, like really good performances. That's just me, though. Um... I, I've talked way too long already. Let's get right into the review because I got a lot of notes. So I'm going to really try to rush through this just because I don't want to be taking too much of your time. So uh, the episode kicks off with uh, that monologue that we've been hearing a lot. I believe we hear it from the warden in the actual show. It's it's the warden does the quote in the trailer. I don't know if he, if he says the quote in the show. I think he does, though. Uh, but it's basically saying, talking about Castle Rock, saying um, when people do horrible stuff, I'm paraphrasing, of course, people do horrible stuff, um, it's not them, it's this place. And the, the thing is that they're right. We hear that quote again, but it's actually Matthew Deaver telling it uh, at this part. Um, so we, we heard it earlier, I believe, from Ward and Lacey. This time we're hearing it from Matt's part. Um, Henry's father, basically, and they show a bunch of images and videos of a, a helicopter crash, a bus getting destroyed by an oncoming train. Um, just all this horrible, horrible stuff that's happened in Castle Rock. So we see Matthew building the cell in his basement that uh, is what keeps uh, Henry, the Henry we know and love uh, as he's a kid. He's been seeing flashbacks of this. We never knew who built it. We never knew what basement he was in. He was in Matthew's basement, it looks like. Um, and Matthew ends the, the monologue saying God answered when he, he was asking for God's help and God answered. He's said this line so many times. We get it. God answered. He's a nutcase. Um, I feel like they're really overdoing the God answered thing, but I don't know. Um, now, after the opening sequence, we get um, I, our first little, little smidget of, I don't know what the F is going on. Uh, we see the kid, Bill Skarsgård's character, um, in a different life, a different universe, if you will. Um, he's a doctor. He's trying to cure dementia or Alzheimer's. He uh, has like an implant that he's trying to sell um, so it can, you can be put uh, in the brain or something like that. 
Um, so it, it turn, the metaphorically turns on the lights for dementia patients uh, because they're always wandering around with, in their head. The lights are off. They don't remember stuff. This will be able to turn the lights back on and they'll be able to figure out what's going on. Um, so it's like an alternate universe. He's, he's just living a normal life. He's got a wife. He's a good guy. This is great. Uh, for the first time this season, we've seen him act normal, not just a crazy psychopath. So that was cool. I I'm glad that little 180. Um, he returns home because he gets a phone call from Alan, um, and he asks, is mom all right? So I'm like, is mom all right? All right, let's, who's his mom? And Alan responds, Ruth is okay. First off, what? Ruth is his mom. I don't know what's going on there. Second, I felt like this was the writers kind of like telling the, telling the viewers, like, being it so easy that, that, that this is parents, if you said, hey, is mom all right? My dad would be like, yeah, she's fine. He wouldn't say Ruth is fine. He wouldn't call her by her first name. That just doesn't make any sense. That has nothing to do with it. But uh, basically, uh, it looks like Ruth and Matthew is his parents. So I thought, okay, did they have a kid and they just never said it? I don't know. Um, but next, he ends up going to uh, his original home, the home that Henry, our Henry, lives um, and he basically goes to the next door, and we see Molly's sister, and we end up learning that Molly's actually, in this universe, successful. Uh, she's on the town council. She has a lot of uh, leeway in this town, a lot of pull. A lot of people, you know, look up to her, I guess. And she's actually um, keeping her uh, sister, in, letting her live in her house because her sister's real bad. So their roles have switched, it looks like. Her, uh, Molly's helping her sister out in a difficult time. And uh, she, Molly ends up seeing uh, the kid, and says, Henry Deaver, is that you? So he is Henry Deaver. Will the real Henry Deaver please stand up? That is the theme of this episode. Um, we have two Henry Deavers now. I'm going to get into a lot more about this later in the review, but uh, we end up learning that Matt, uh, or Ruth, still has dementia in this universe, but she got it a lot earlier. She ended up leaving Matt and uh, taking Henry with her to Boston, and Alan joined her as well. Um, so it's like a fairy tale ending with uh, Ruth and Alan's story in this universe. It's a lot better than the our universe, the viewer's universe. Um, we learned Matt ended up killing himself, um, so he went just all lunatic, and Molly never killed him in this universe. He just ended up kill taking his own life. Um, the kid ends up going in the basement of the house, you know, after looking around. He tells his wife on the phone, we have a new house because my father killed himself, so we have a house now. Um, he ends up going in the basement, and what does he find? None other than our Henry as a kid. Our Henry Deaver as a kid locked up in the cage, and that really freaks him out. Um, so, we uh, obviously the police come. He calls the police and says, hey, my dad just locked up a kid in his basement. Is that weird? Um, no. But the police come, and good old Dennis is back. Dennis, the one that ended up going insane and shooting up the entire Shawshank prison. Um, he's back. In this universe, he's just a regular good old cop. So I was really happy to see him back. I really liked his character, and I was really mad when he was killed off. Um, that that re If you go back and watch that review on the episode he dies in, uh, I'm, I'm furious. I'm so frustrated. But he's a cop. He ends up, you know, asking about Henry's dad, like, did he touch you? You know, obviously, did he do inappropriate stuff? And the kid, the new Henry basically says no he just believed that God was talking to him he was just a, a bit of a nutcase um and he has no idea why uh this kid is locked up in the basement um we see Henry our Henry um hearing the sound while the police are like talking with him and he ends up running towards the woods but they grab him before he can get into the woods so obviously he wants to go back to the woods to hear the sound um we'll learn a little more about this or right now because I have it next in my notes um, the kid ends up, the kid, Bill Skarsgård, Henry, I don't know what to call him. I'll just say Bill Skarsgård, uh, the actor that plays him. He ends up finding tapes that Matthew left, um, basically saying, telling the whole story, basically talking about, like, going back to the monologue about how horrible the town is, how, uh, this, how God answered him. This kid came up to him and said he heard the sound, Dad. He says his name's Henry Deaver. He knows all this stuff about me, about Matt. Um, he knows how he likes his eggs, sunny side up or something. He knows that Ruth um, tried to trick him and say that Henry heard the sound, even though that he didn't, basically telling him, telling Henry to lie about hearing the sound. So it's like, we saw that from the flashbacks in our universe, that she would try to trick Matt and say to Henry, hey, just pretend you hear the sounds so he doesn't fly off the handle. Um, but we get more of that, and uh, he... Matt took him in and locked him up in a basement because finally he has his son that can hear the sound and hear God. What is going on? I don't know. If you're if you're lost in this review, I'm 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 sorry. 
Um, but I'm just so lost with this whole thing. Um, so next, uh, Molly and Kid end up, or Molly and Bill Skarsgård end up looking for Henry at Juniper Hill, the mental institution that we've seen earlier in the season. That's where they put him. Um, and they find it uh, totally set on fire, and they learn that he, Henry, the 12-year-old, or however old he is, Henry, set the fire, killing seven people in the process, and like 11 of them or something is are missing. Um, and they believe that he did it. So uh, we'll get a little more into this in the second half of the review. Let me uh, take let me take a step back, pause the video real quick, and uh, I don't know what's going on. If you don't know what's going on, if you feel like this review is confusing, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm just not give, maybe I'm not doing speaking it as best I can. Uh, but this is a very confusing episode, and I just, I hate this direction. I might rant in the second half of this re review. I'm, I really might. Um, hope you're enjoying the review, even if you're confused. Thank you so much for watching, and we're going to get right into more of this episode, of the Henry Deaver episode, in the second half of the review. Alright, so like I said in the first half of the review, uh, our Henry, the kid version of him, burns down uh, Juniper Hill, the mental institution, and he gets away. Uh, the police end up finding him, and they, so they take him to his precinct, and that's where Molly and the kid end up finding him. Or, or after, because they want to talk to him, they want to know what's going through his head. They convince because Molly is on the council, she's able to convince the p police to let let her and the kid kind of interrogate him. Not really interrogate him, but question him. And since the kid's a doctor, he'll be able to talk um, some sense into him, or like kind of understand what's going on. So basically, um, he doesn't really talk. He just says, "We need to get back to the woods." Um, and she touches his hand to, like, uh, calm him down and, like, console him. And, uh, she sees, like, all that we've seen with her past as a kid. Like, living next door to this Henry Deaver, the kid version of it. So she sees that. And I don't know why does she have powers in this universe. It did not, did not look like she had any of the psychic and weird powers that she does in our universe. So that was a big question. I didn't really understand that. Um, but they decide to take him back home. And that is my biggest concern, biggest confusion with this episode. Why, after burning down a mental institution, killing seven people in the process, does she really have that much pull in this town that they're like, yeah, you can take him home. That's it. That's what happens. They're like, we're going to have police watching him outside the house and stuff, and the, the police are going to be surrounding your house. But they let him go. I don't, I, I don't know if I missed something, or they just totally went past that or there's a good reason I, I just wasn't paying attention I guess but why would they let him go after killing some people no I'm pretty sure he would stay there I'm pretty sure he would not go back to his house um but that's just me I don't know uh but so since she like felt his pain and saw his past and her past she basically convinces uh, the kid that they need to take him to the woods so uh they get at a stoplight Dennis is riding behind them because he's gonna escort them not escort them he's behind them so he's just gonna make sure that they go there as a train is going by she hits the freaking pedal to the metal they fly past the train train you know obviously can makes uh blocks Dennis from getting through so you know obviously they can get, they can get us a, a good getaway um towards the forest so they go to the forest. Dennis ends up showing up anyway, so it was like, what was even the point of that? Um, but he ends up showing up pretty much right away. So they he makes the kid get down on the ground, but he races after Molly and uh, Henry, R. Henry. Um, and they, like, see this weird universe. Like, it's like a filter is around their vision. Like, you know when you see, like, a movie with, like, sci-fi elements and stuff and, like, there's just like a, a forest or like a plane, just a regular plane of view. They're just looking out and they like put on these special glasses and they're able to see stuff that isn't there. It was kind of like that. So basically they see all this random stuff, like these escape criminals. They see this woman holding a knife. They see all this like random visions. Um, and Dennis ends up shooting up in the air to tell them to stop. Just a little warning shot. And apparently that sets off Molly getting shot because it's a weird universe or something. I don't understand why she got shot. I have no idea why that happened. Uh, but basically, she falls on the ground. The kid ends up getting up, going to her, says, like, you know, are you okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, and she just says, help him. Help the help Henry Deaver. Um, so he goes after him. and uh, Or no, he doesn't go after him because all of a sudden, he just is magically transformed into uh, 1991, where we see, like, snow all around the very first scene of the show, um, he's transported to that universe, the universe that we know. I don't know why he was transported to that universe. Uh, and then he basically sees uh, from a distance uh, Alan Pangborn in 1991 find 
the version Henry that we know on the ice, the very first scene of the, the series. Um, and then he basically tells Molly, we're transported back to where we left off the first episode, basically that he wandered around aimlessly um, in this universe because he didn't know what to do. And Warden Lacey captured him and locked him up. And it's been 27 years, and he doesn't know why he's in this universe. So many questions from that. One, I think, honestly, I'm sorry if you really like that. And I see a lot of reviews where people are loving this. I'm happy about that. I'm really glad people are enjoying it. But that is so stupid. This entire time, we have he has all these creepy powers. 27 years, why is he acting like such a nut job? Why are we just hearing about this story now? Why every scene is he so monotone and only says like two things? And then all of a sudden, this episode, he's like telling Molly, this is what happened, baby. This is what happened. I don't understand that. I don't, I just can't wrap my head around that. Um, so basically, from the first episode, when they asked him his name in the prison, he said Henry Deaver. He was telling the truth because that is his name. It's just been 27 years later. And it's a big coincidence, a big stretch that the warden just happens to find this kid, lock him up just because he's a nut job too. So I felt like they were really trying to connect the warden with it. And it's like, he just, so he's just a lunatic that really has nothing to do with it. He's, but locked up this guy that's in a different universe. I didn't understand. I just, I'm so lost. And like, obviously people are going to, if people feel this, if people actually watch this review and, and comment on it, they're probably going to be like, oh, here and here is what you're missing. Or this is why you're confused. Um, but I'm just so lost. And I just thought, ah, oh, that ruined a lot of stuff that I liked. Because I liked how ominous and creepy Bill Skarsgård was. And now he's like normal, but he just has... Why does he have these powers? Why does Molly have powers in this universe? Why does all this bad stuff happen to him? Because he's in a different universe? I don't really know. And I don't know what we're leading towards. With uh, the finale, I don't know, like, what are we... Who are we trying to stop? Are we trying to stop the bad guy? Are we trying to stop Bill Skarsgård? Are we trying to figure out what's going on with Henry and the sound? Is that going to be a huge thing? I don't really know what we're going towards. Like, if it was, if it was, if we didn't have this episode, I think, oh, we're trying, the finale is trying to stop the kid, trying to stop Bill Skarsgård from hurting anymore. Why was he trying to hurt Ruth in her episode? Why was he trying to find her in the bath, in, in the bathtub and try to like kill her? So many freaking questions. And it, it just, it does not make sense. I feel like the 10th episode, people are going to be like, oh, watch the finale and it'll make a lot of sense. I feel like it's not, but it should because it's in an anthology, so it's not going to have anything to do with the second season, or second season is going to be a different story, so I feel like they have to answer all the questions here. I'm so lost, and I um, that put it left a bad taste in my mouth this uh, for this show. I was on the fence about it. I was like, yeah, it's okay. It has its moments, but now I'm just like, I don't care. I just, I, I'm, I'm honestly ready for it to end, um, and hopefully just a better second season, so... That's my thoughts on it. I'm sorry if I'm rant ranting, and I'm sorry if you think I'm like I'm just ignorant because I don't understand it. I'm I'm not saying I don't like it because I don't understand it. Usually that's fine with episodes. The first three episodes I didn't know what was going on, but I was hooked. Uh, but like come four, five, and six, I just started losing a lot of interest in the episodes. But those are my thoughts. Thank you so much for watching the review. I'm sorry it was so long. It's probably my longest review on an episode I did not like at all. So that's kind of weird. But thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts, theories, opinions, all down below if you are watching this. Um, thank you again so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.